So far, we learned about three categories of Java classes. We got console app, we got utility methods like a circle, and also we got JUnit tests. So these are the three categories of classes you might create for your Java project throughout the semester. However, currently we actually put everything into a single uh, package, like a folder, like a default package. This may not be so desirable because you really want to organize uh, the Java classes according to their functionality. So we may just want to create three subfolders or three packages. Let's uh, do this quickly and then I will conclude uh, this week's tutorial by telling you how to visualize the uh, relationship between them. Okay, let's now right click on the source and then we're gonna say package over here. So let's first of all try to write uh, the new one, uh, the first one, let's say model. Okay, I'll explain what, a, what model really means in a moment. Just say model and say finish. Let's create a second package over here, new package, and then uh, console apps. Plural rather than singular, just because we might put more than one console applications into here. Finish. And then uh, last one, new, and then we'll say class. Oh, sorry, not class, package. New. And then uh, package, JUnit tests. Again, it's plural rather than singular because you might put more than one classes there to testing multiple classes or testing multiple methods. Okay, so now we got three packages over here. Let's be careful now. Let's now say circle over here. If you can simply click on that and then hold it and drag it into the model over here. Okay, so now you can see it's now under the model. If you click on that, you can see now this 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 line has been added uh, automatically by Eclipse. Seeing that, so now we are using circle inside the context of model package, right? Let's try the next other uh, remaining one: console app one, console app two, and also uh, hello world, which is doesn't really use. Uh, the circle utility method, but that's okay. That's also a console app. Okay, and then uh, hold it, and then going to drag them into console apps over here. So now if you, you can see under console apps, we got circle app one, which got package over here, console app two, which also got package, and also hello world, which also got package, right? Finally, let's put uh, over here, you can see the test circle, which still belong to the default package, so now click on that, hold it, and then drag it and drop, drop it to JUnit test over here. So now if you see under test circle over here, you can see the package over here, right? So these are the three packages that we're going to stick to uh, throughout the semester. Let me now talk about exactly how you can visualize the relationship between them. First, let me close all the tabs and start from scratch. I can simply click on one of the tabs and say close all. Okay, just make it clean. And then you can see we got three packages. I'm gonna talk about them one by one. Let me first of all switch to my notes. So these are the three packages that we have developed. So let's think about in a more general sense and I'll draw some examples to our uh, to this week's example as well. We got model package over here and also we got console apps. So model which is uh, Model actually store the uh, circle with the utility methods and also console apps actually store the console apps application with the main method. And for example, circle app one and also circle app two and also the JUnit tests as well, right? We got separation of concern. It's a very important software engineering principle we want to stick to, separation of concern. We want to separate them into different subfolders. All right. And then uh, let's now go over one by one. Let's start with uh, the model, okay? So you can see for the model cluster, so here I can say you can get as many classes as you like. Currently, we just got one class called circle, right? Just circle. In general, it could be as many classes as you like. We'll see that in later uh, weeks example. And we're gonna get classes, also we're gonna get methods. More specifically, we have utility method. And it's a very quick review. If I just go back to my Eclipse over here, so if you expand a uh, model, you can see the circle. So this is the only class we have. And we're gonna make sure it's a static for utility method. You can review in the previous video about the pattern for implementing a utility method. 
And then it's a very, very crucial point over here. No print statements in the utility method, right? So you can see over here, we only got print statement in the console app, but not in the utility method. You can see we don't have any system in the other print line because whatever you return over here is going to be passed back to the console app and then will be in turn into uh, will be in turn to be printed to the console. You don't really print to the console over here. Never ever. Okay. You only got the return statement over here. So that's why this point, let me emphasize once more, you only put return statements over here, right? So the point about no print statement is very, very crucial, okay? So that's about the model package. Let's look at the console apps package. Okay, so now uh, every console application, it has a main method. For example, in our case, uh, what do we have? We have, you can expand console apps over here. We got circle app one and circle app two and also hello world, okay? So for example, one of them, for example, circle app two, the improved version. They will be calling methods from the model, right? And also containing print statement. So this is the critical part, right? We do have the print statement. However, no return statements, right? It's really critical again. So no, uh, there will be print statement over here, but no uh, return statements, kind of the opposite. Think about the, the, the separation of uh, the, divi divi uh, the division of labor over here. Console application is first going to call the utility method that's in the model package and then the model package is going to uh, call whatever the relevant utility method is, is going to return the result back to the console application. And then the console application is actually going to use the print statement over there to print to the console. That's the flow. Okay, you really want to uh, stick to this. Finally, let's look at the JUnit tests uh, package. So we basically uh, talk about the difference between expected versus actual values. Let me just show you once more. So you can see if I go into JUnit tests, the test circle over here, you can see when I try to do assert equals, I will show you more assertion uh, methods uh, later in the tutorial series. So this part over here is the expected value. And this part here is, is the actual value that's returned by uh, the, the utility method. We want to make sure they actually match within certain tolerance level, right? That's something we talked about already. Okay, so you want to know the difference between expected versus actual values. Really important to really do the testing automatically. And then we also got uh, calling methods from the model. You can see this part here, they, really the, they are really the same. Calling methods from the model for JUnit tests and calling methods from the model for console apps. They share the same uh, model package over here, right? Just notice that. And then notice that uh, there's no print statements in the JUnit test. You can see if I go back here, we simply just run assertion over here. We don't really say any system that out the print line. System that out the print line only exists in the console application over here. In other packages, you never ever do any uh, uh, system that out the print line. In here, you just say, uh, say something like assert equals. And here, you simply say return. Okay, so you just say assertions over here. Right, so that's about the separation of concern of these three packages. So typically, in your lab assignments, you will be uh, you will be given some JUnit test. You might be given some console application as well, but you will be uh, required to maybe implement some model over here. For example, you might be given some utility methods to really implement, but I'll give you further instructions. But as long as you can get a clear picture about the separation between these three components over here, that'll be enough for the further study for this course. Finally, I want to show you uh, two things, okay? Number one is about, since we actually got packages over here, so how would your uh, project folder structure look like, right? Let me show it to you. So let me, uh, so on my desktop, I actually got this workspace over here. If I go into it, you can see under week number one, under source, you can see each package, console apps, JUnit has, and also model, they correspond to a separate folder, subfolder, under which I got the different Java files over here, right? Okay, good. And then 
Uh, now, another thing to look at would be, uh, we want to look at uh, the uh, GitHub. So this will be maybe the only time I will do, do it together with you. Later on, you have, you're on your own to really uh, make sure you stick to the GitHub. So if I simply launch the GitHub desktop, I'm using my own machine. So maybe you can either do this from the lab machine or maybe from your home computer. Right, you can see these are all the changes we have made. Uh, you can see we've added, you know, some class and also etc. Right, so these are all the changes. I'm just going to accept them all. So I can I can say uh, finish tutorial videos tutorial uh, for week number one, and then I'm just going to say commit. There might be some files which I should have ignored. I'll leave that to you if you want to ignore them. Push origin. And then uh, everything's done. You want to make sure you commit and also push. Once this is done, I'm not going to show you, but you can go to your GitHub account on the cloud and it is going to show uh, things over there. One final thing that will be useful for you. Okay. So now let's say, depending on the labs or the uh, programming test, sometimes you might be required to submit certain classes. Maybe you're only required to submit, for example, only the circle class, in which case you can simply browse to your project folder and then go into the source go into maybe uh, the model and submit this file only. Sometimes we may want to ask you, we may ask you to submit the entire project. How can you do it? Okay. Basically, what you need to do is you want to export the current projects as an uh, archive file. Let me show you how you can do it. Very easy. So again, go to file and then go for export. And then under general, you will see something called archive file over here, right? say next and then uh you're just going to include everything just for simplicity uh it simply excludes certain packages but i would say just get everything here you just you want to select okay everything here everything including the settings bin source just everything that's okay and then you're going to browse to for example i want to store on my desktop so i'm going to select under my desktop for example and save Initially, simply untitled.zip. I'm just going to maybe uh, give some name over here. You can say EECS1022 underscore winter21. And then I can say uh, week01. Right? That's tutorial week01.zip. That's the project I would like to uh, uh, export. Okay, And then I'm going to say finish. Okay, you can see now on my desktop, actually this will be the archive file uh, for, for me, uh, for, for, you, for your record, or maybe for uh, submission if necessary. All right, so that's about this week's tutorial. I hope uh, you actually managed to really get this far uh, reasonably soon. And then uh, starting from the second week, we're gonna show you more Java programming techniques.